Oh, whoa, we're back again. Another character, Snow Queen. Ah. How do I describe the headache that is Snow Queen and her damage? Ice skating. Ice lances, frost blast, and gust of cold all exist to enable the pop DPS of Ice Shatter. All chill enemies shatter, taking 50 damage and removing their chilled status. Frost Blast during day, applying additional damage, but during night, just having longer lasting frost. Ice Lances, being able to do 50 damage to chilled targets. And Ice Skating, creating frost under feet that can have crossed enemies be made chill, dealing damage during day, and having longer lasting frost during night. Everything to do with this character is to enable a cooldown setup. And much much like the advice I gave about Beowulf and that I gave about Aladdin, this is a charged base character. And you need to enable every single bit of her damage to be useful towards that edge. It will not be useful otherwise. There's really not much to it other than that. This it's really her her kit style is probably the most boring for me to play. Simply on virtue of how well nothing it is. I wouldn't say nothing burger, but just it doesn't feel good to play. Especially the fact that your damage is so gated behind that kind of enablement. Doop doop doop. Shards, shards, shards. Try to avoid taking as much damage on Snow Queen as you can. She's not very good with dealing with chip damage. Just getting fucking clipped by those. So, how do we build her for upgrades? Even though she has defense shit, everything damage. All damage. All damage everything. Every time.
Rip. It's it's really frustrating to deal with to deal with her DPS. I can tell you this much. That is the wrong mode. I can tell you this much. It is a, a fucking headache to deal with her damage. And the reason why it's a headache to deal with her damage is because at least two of her spells do not incur DPS cost or a DPS type if it does not have damage attached to it. Um, whenever you start up, you want to avoid Ice Clone and take Windy Lances or Double Shot because they apply the effect of your Ice Shot across your abilities and spells. She and Melusine are the two people who do this with their damage types. So a lot of your focus and control for making advantageous use of the DPS. is fully reliant in the application status and the AoE combo ability of her DPS. She's a bit of an inverse with the Pied Piper in that way. She wants to be able to do things at a distance. She wants to be able to cycle her spells to take people out and wants to do it safely, but she's not really able to do that very well outside of daytime where the majority of her AoE damage exists. And because of the nature of her kiting, makes her a bit of a nightmare to use. Enough that you might consider trying to take take enemies out like this. Um, Frost Exposure. Let's go Frost Surge. I haven't actually been able to take this upgrade before, so we're going to try it. At least combos well with a long distance play style. Unfortunately for us, we're getting really unlucky here. Very, 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 very unlucky with our spells. Not sure if it's something because of me having more things unlocked, but it can really feel unfucking fair. Much to the point that I was describing. <sighs> because of the day and night setting, your Q doesn't always have damage, so this will miss damage. During this, if you don't have a spell for this, in bolding this with damage, this will be missing damage. And if you don't get a spell for this, this will be missing damage. So technically, you have three spells that will be missing damage during a particular shift. So a lot of your time is going to be made kiting and running away from situations and trying to level on the go, rather than taking on fights while you're at the events that you want to go towards. Me 
And damn time again, so this is much easier. I surfed back into that. I'm, I'm sad. I thought I had enough damage to be able to get through that, and I thought she was also ending it quicker. Hopefully we can be able to get a start here that actually has some damage to simulate what it's going to be like. Blue Lances is fine. The archetype here really is dependent on levels. Sad to say. Her kit is not good enough on its own to be able to handle situations and fights at all. Not even fucking close. Really, stickily, what makes it so hard is that because her damage is tied to sh shifts. <sighs> oh, let's not do the revive this time. Because her damage is based on this pop cooldown ratio style, and one of your first upgrades is going to be empowering your auto attack, she is very much a hit and run play style. Uh, Shattering Blast is new, that I have not seen before, but it is also good. This is a kind of spell that you really, 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 really need. Where now you are increasing the amount of rotation damage that you're able to put out. So the way it works is basically... Apply some chill. Throw this down. Causes a pop. Causes a pop. And then make use of the frost on them to increase the damage that you're doing to them. And that'd be the best way for you to deal with them. Um, we're gonna take over blood. She's never, there's never, rarely ever gonna be a situation where you're gonna remain at full topped off health. She's not somebody who wants to have uh, regeneration either. Especially not through auto attacks. Well, we found our lair, but we can't go in there until we actually have damage.
Um, we're going to say Cold Heart here. While we could be able to increase the area size for this damage, as an AoE, like, with the AoE short sh uh, shot, we do not want to actually be that close to them. We want to be able to try and kite around and about them. So what we want to do here is draw them in. Go for the pop on the ranged. They have the really problematic ones. And keep trying to move. We're trying to get to level 4 as quickly as we possibly can. You have to wait for a second, mother. I'm recording. Look on me and despair. My dear, dear murder. for certainty with 100% and no irony that your biggest bane of existence is going to be the melees. It's going to be the melees that are going to run at you, like that are going to run and move at you, and healers that are going to heal people through your DPS. So, suggestions, for, well, reasons for the suggestion why you should take extra damage. Having this chill stack all the way up and using effects like Shattering Blast is going to be the only way that you can reliably clear out the majority of danger mobs that are going to be a problem for you. In an encounter like this, it's going to be these ranged attackers. You gotta get them grouped up generally enough so they can be able to get the damage off on all of them. And that they will die. 
relatively. Finally got Hailstorm. So now, when we're moving by these, we can actually just drop this on top of them and they'll open it for us. Much better than the alternative. Actually, no. Clear this first. You will have to do a little bit of auto spacing for these. Not a lot, but a little. Definitely need to spend upgrades first before we do that. Ice Queen is somebody who very much benefits from having crit and benefits from having legendary skills. So it is imperative that you try to get as much money on the map as you possibly can. Cooldown, her ultimate is not really special. Her power is very important. Um, it's the only good thing that's in that chest. Good, we're in very bad need for healing. Look on me and despair. Prepare to 
And once you have enough levels, you should fairly be able to handle situations like this. Cannot explain how important it is that these get legendaried. Cannot explain. Let's attempt to get a level up first before we go to that event. Really looking for a fountain right now. Not very good at those. I can barely hear you. He's drowning you out. I can barely hear you because of her voice is drowning you out. I can barely hear myself because your voice is drowning out my thoughts, Mal. That's unfortunate. Ultimate special. It's really special you need to lower. In fact, the more you can pop this, the better for your character. Will I lose a run because I was mentally distracted by my mother? I don't know. Will people in the audience have heard that hard R? Who knows? You decide. We have to find both keys, but we're not going to have a chance to use both keys.
Relative short work of it. An extra charge. Get damage for everything. Wonderful run to get it. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of life to work with now. We don't have a life to work with either. But with this, this should be enough damage for the graveyard event. And now, you see the night and day difference of how powerful she is. When she has crit, when she has damage, when she is set up to do so. I predict sub 1. I don't want her to have a face. I literally don't want her to have another face. Um, that is terrifying. Let's do Nor Marathorn. Well, we have time. We could try in two minutes. I'm at my wit's end. I need to build a stone fortress capable of withstanding the creatures of the night. I'm not going to touch these until pathing my way back out, but there's a good chance I might not be able to make it out in time. No, we are not. We are not going to make it. What a shame. What a shame! At least we're topped off. Now let's try not to die.
She's really, really not easy, and it can be really, really frustrating to do it, but... The proof is in the pudding for its own damage, to be serious. The proof is in the pudding of the damage. If you're able to be lucky enough to get legendary on her, get her shit to fucking legendary status, get that spell if you can find it, if you're lucky enough to find it in your run, dump the damage, and just go. Just go and pray that you kill fast enough. Eight points fucking off. Eight points fucking off. Anyways. Next time. We'll get to do my favorite character. And no, it's not because she's a mermaid. Goodbye.